This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Previously on TV Tuners. Swanson, I'm tired of drinking blood. Bring me some water. I have to retake the third grade? Wow, we've given Keorang's body to ISIS. Mario! Koopa's stolen all the televisions! With this wig, I can sneak past security. Hey! That's my kidney! Huh. Time to go to Target. And now, TV Tuners continues? Fanatics. It's a weekly dive on the latest in TV news and reviews. I'm your host, Swanson. With me, as always, is my co host and superhero with a dark side, Stairmaster. Which one? I could apply to like six of them. Uh, you're the one that isn't a sexual deviant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you're a good person who That's, may or may okay, not so be. Okay, so it's like three of them. Well, I think only one, really. Mm. Oh, I guess we do see that lady crushing a man's skull with her ass in the trailer. Yeah. Anyway, you also may or may not be like a neo-Nazi or something. Who knows? (laughs) Yeah, that is the running subtext of this podcast, huh? Hmm. And with (laughs) us as always is our other co-host and guy just trying to get through his life after a tragedy, Kioran. Hello. Would you like to sell us some appliances? Um, I I work at like Radio Shack. We don't really sell appliances. I mean, gizmos, electronics. Yeah, gadgets. What gadgets you got? Uh, I, I have HDMI cables. You want some wow. of those? Whoa! I can plug my computer into my TV. <laughs> you could plug your TV into your computer. Oh, with this cable. But what if I want to plug my computer into my TV? Yeah, that's the HDMI cable. But this cable, uh, it's like some kind of new one. You could plug it into your computer. It's like a uh, for your what smart TV. What does HDMI stand for? Um, high definition mixed input. Correct. Ding ding. Oh, it's a quiz show. Welcome to Radio Shack. <laughs> anyway. Has anyone had? Has anyone actually been in a Radio Shack in like the last ten years? I mean, I know they no. don't exist, but <laughs> I don't think they were open ten years ago. They were. They were still around for a while. They've cl- they've been closed for open. like a year, I think. I think the last time I was in one was probably like two thousand seven ish. Yeah, there was definitely a Radio Shack at my local mall for at least uh, until the lo- two years ago. So I think it was about eleven years ago. Last time I went to Radio Shack. Yeah, I've seen it uh, from afar at the mall, and it never looked busy, so I never went in there. <laughs> Wait, so you would have gone in there if there were a bunch of people? No, but I mean, I would never went in there regardless, I guess, yeah. Swanson likes to go to the mall to meet people. That's I was kind of wholesome. <laughs> I was briefly curious of going in there when they were having, like, they're going out of business sale to see if they had, like, cheap headphones or something. But uh, they but sold that out passed everything. very quickly. Yeah, I was like, no thanks. <laughs> and whenever I go to the mall, I just bump into people to make conversation. <laughs> I also haven't been to a mall in ten years. Wow, what a life! <laughs> a I mall, like... hmm. What's the point of Sunco Video isn't open anymore? Sunco, you keep saying Sunco like it's <laughs> Sunco Pop. <laughs> yeah, they the Sunco and... Video went to Funko Pops. <laughs> Swanson, Stairmaster, and I want Funko Pops. <laughs> well, no, I can't I get you guys. Wait, you want to be you want to be Funko Pops? Is that what you're saying? No, what we can... want to. We want you to purchase Funko Pops first and decorate the studio with no, them. No. Funko. 
All right. Well, well who are some of your favorite characters? Goku. Uh, oh, there's a Funko Pop for that. <laughs> the Incredible Hulk. Oh, there's Negan definitely... from The Walking Dead. Yep, that's a Funko Pop. <laughs> Donald Trump. Probably oh, no. a Funko Pop. Don't worry, folks. When TV Tuners gets its merchandise, we'll be Nendroids for sure. Oh, yeah. Because we're badass rebels. <laughs> Just like Nendroids. Anyway, uh, what did you guys watch this week? Oh, I've been watching The Expanse. I'm almost done with season two. Yes, yeah, there. We're not getting paid to watch that anymore. You don't have to keep going. I'm being paid in amusement. What? Oh. Oh, that's not it's really a do- monetary value, I don't think. For 40 yeah. minutes at a p- time, I don't have to think about my life or the way the world is going. Well, yeah, you can't put a price on that, I guess. Instead, you get to think about how bad space is instead. <laughs> yeah. And how terrible the Earth is and Mars. Yeah. Stare can just watch this and be like, huh, at least I don't have it as bad as these guys. <laughs> Yet. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what do you think of it so far? Oh, it's good. I do not yeah. regret making a TV tuner show of the month. Last month. Yeah, I watched episode two <gasps> of, of The Expanse. <laughs> <gasps> what did I? Well, I can't it made even me remember. smile and laugh. <laughs> I can't even remember what happened on that one. It's been so long. Ago. So it made you both smile and laugh. Yeah, like those shenanigans with the water rationing. <laughs> yeah. And having to fix the transmitter radio and the guy almost well, was... dying. Well, as promised, was... I watched Stranger Things season three. Oh, it's a time? Yeah, it was good. And we're going to talk about it now. As promised, Keo and I are going to debate. CNN presents live the Stranger Things debate with Wolf Blitzer. Oh, wow. Uh, Oh, no. (laughs) Spot on Wolf Blitzer impressions there. (laughs) All I know about him is his Jeopardy score. Anyway, uh, Stairmaster is going to be our moderator for this debate since he didn't watch the show. Mm-hmm. That's right, honey. Kill. what are your opening thoughts? I thought the show was entertaining, but riddled with a bunch of issues that made it hard for me to get into it again. Okay, Swanson, your opening thoughts? Uh, while there were clear issues with the show, I think that they had a story that propelled them with a lot of forward momentum that season two was lacking. Okay, Kia, what's the biggest issue? Most glaring, my, at least. My biggest issue was that the show managed to completely trample my suspension of disbelief <laughs> halfway through. Uh-huh, could you give an example? They had some kids infiltrate a secret Russian base <gasps> under the mall. What? Wait. Under the mall, there's a Russian base. Yes, where they're, where they're opening gates into the upside down. <laughs> Why is the base under... A mall in Indiana, not in Russia. Because of, I the the place is connected to the Upside Down, so they had to go there to do it properly, I guess. <laughs> mm. And these kids infiltrate it and all make it out alive without being dead. Okay, so you want to see someone die so there can be, like, tension and pathos? Either that or not have the kids infiltrate a Russian base. Okay, but if you had to kill one of the kids in order to... Up the stakes. Which kid would it be? Uh, well, actually, I, I guess like the, Mike. It'd be the, Mike. The, <laughs> <laughs> Just say yeah, it, Keo. We all know the Mike. Yeah, rest in peace, Mike. <laughs> Which one's Mike? Mike is the one who dates Eleven. Oh yeah, he's dead weight <laughs> to the show. I feel. Okay, Swanson, do you have a rebuttal? Uh, I would argue. Uh, that while I guess there is a sort of suspension of disbelief needed for believing that a bunch of kids could infiltrate a Russian base, this is also a program that takes place in the 80s at mm-hmm. the height of Russian paranoia. And okay. uh, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm done already? No, 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 no. <laughs> Continue, you have the floor. <laughs> uh, it takes place in the middle of the 80s, but it's also a program that... Uh, 
takes direct inspiration from things mm-hmm. in the 80s, which is why something, one of the uh, primary inspirations is a movie called Red Dawn, in which a group of teenagers <laughs> managed to stop a Russian invent, uh, intervention, or invasion, sorry. Okay, someone who hasn't seen the show, the season, shouldn't infiltrating the Russian base be what Hopper does? Like, that was his plot line in, like, season one for the first couple of episodes. He does some Russian stuff, but nothing <laughs> nearly as, like, silly as what the kids did. I, I, mean, I, I just I just felt that the whole sequence with the kids doing that, I don't really know about the inspirations of it. Is there, but... like, Home Alone nonsense? Almost. Oh, man. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> okay. I think if they, like, set up some Home Alone traps and, like, destroyed Joe Pesci's dick and balls... With like a bludgeon somehow. That would. Oh man, it. Joe Pesci is a Russian spy. That would have been something to watch. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess my other issue leading from that is that the kids definitely feel like they're super invincible. And oh yeah. There's just no no stakes at all, no tension. Because it's true. I don't know, three uh, seasons of this, they, they, it just feels yeah, like never, nothing is going to happen. <laughs> It's true. The only person who gets beaten up at all from the Russian uh, in- intervention is Steve, who is constantly getting, <laughs> How does Steve who is constantly beat getting beaten up. Why? Why are the Russians beating up Steve? Because he gets he lets Dustin and uh, another character, who uh, I found very annoying. In the hold season. on, hold on. Is a Russian base accessible by that ice cream shop from the first episode? Not except well, not accessible via it, but they find out from hearing a russian signal around it yeah oh i was hoping like they would turn out that the manager at the ice cream shop was the head of the russian program and steve would get in trouble no the kids just no. managed to crack the code uh, that would have been better really honestly keo i don't even think that was my least favorite story uh storyline in the season oh okay what pissed you off swanson uh, what Jonathan and Nancy ears? literally do nothing this entire season, <laughs> other than run around, run away from a monster. Mm. Their story arc fizzles out about halfway through, and then they really don't have any development after that. Is it like a Netflix Marvel show where they had too many episodes? No, they had too many characters. <laughs> yeah, they had too many characters, and they... Oh, so it's like Bleach. Yes. And, for, and the thing that I was almost screaming at my screen the entire time is, why aren't they communicating with each other? Why? <laughs> because it's based off 80s fiction. I mean, Where everyone after, was two, poisoned. After, after two seasons of this, they shouldn't be this incompetent anymore. Mm. They should be like, the moment something weird happens, they should be like, okay, yeah, we need yeah. to... We need to reach out to all our friends and see what's going on. You don't just mess around anymore. But In Dungeons and Dragon terms, they should be legendary characters at this point. To be fair to that, Keo Rain, uh, they all seem to be working on something that they found was weird individually of each other. And then when they mo- when the moment they noticed that something weird was going down, they were all sort of in separate areas where they couldn't contact one another. I think the show made it a little... The only one that was like egregious was Hopper and... Um... What's her name? I can't remember. Winona Ryder. Uh, because they were just literally out of state. <laughs> were they in Ohio or Illinois? They were in that... Pl- oh, you didn't see season two. Uh, they were in, I think, Illinois, actually. Good. Chicago, baby! I mean, she's freaking out about her magnets and doesn't mention <laughs> it to her kids or anything. It's It's like, I don't... It seemed like they were just kind of repeating what they did in the first season where... They, they had all these different other storylines unraveling separately, and then they converge at the end. They just repeated it. It didn't oh, seem it, to work for the sure season. Felt the, it, it's for sure the same formula, because they do this in season two as well, to a less successful degree. But I would say this is uh, a success on the formula, because the uh, I would say mm, three out mm. of the four subplots work for me. The one that didn't <laughs> was Jonathan and Nancy. So, So what you're saying is it's a C. Since that's a seventy-five percent. Of... <laughs> sure, stairmaster. Well, my biggest problem was the the final confront- confrontation with the mind flayer creature, yeah. which I just I I could I could, I didn't care anymore by that point. The monster, <laughs> the monster was like really flaccid. You it didn't seem a like a threat, monster, really. A more rigid monster. I. What what I'm what I'm saying is, it, it was it was like a Jurassic Park dinosaur that couldn't see <laughs> that couldn't see you, 
if you if you sat still, it was like not a threat to these kids at all. They were they just kind of sat around next to it. it, it <laughs> I'm just imagining them sitting around. <laughs> well, you know, it, they're all scared, huddling behind things, and it couldn't find them for a long time. It, it was like this Wait is the big mi- this is the big threat. Hold on, it's a mind flare, but it can't sense their minds. Yeah, it's it's a mind flare because it like gets into people's heads and make and controls them. But at the same time, it doesn't seem like it's intelligent at all, from what we could see. It it just was not the, the threat it, it appeared to be at all. No. Oh. Yeah, that's um, not stupid. I enjoyed the finale for the most part. Uh, the mind flare stuff's a little iffy. Uh, there's an entire scenario. There's an entire moment where they sing the song to Never Ending Story. <laughs> In the middle uh, of it, which really deflates the action and is unnecessary. I want to say, I remember that the finale to season one wasn't that good either. Like, the Demi uh, Gorgon stuff. That's like, what I was about to bring up, which is that, in terms of finales, this is actually somehow the best Stranger Things finale. Oh, that's not good. Because someone dies. <laughs> so, yeah, presumably. We don't know if he'll... Spoilers, I guess. Uh... Yeah, Hopper dies at the end. We don't, we don't see his body, though, so I guarantee you episode one of season four is ending with bearded Hopper hopping out of something. What, did he fall off a cliff or something? No, he was did in the middle. Did a bomb go off? You remember the machine that those Russians got disintegrated in? Oh, yeah. They're using that, and he throws the big Russian dude who's like a Terminator ripoff. <laughs> He throws him straight into it. It's a really gnarly effect that I liked because the dude just gets disintegrated. And then the whole room blows up. And everyone in it disintegrates, but you don't really see him disintegrate. Okay, that's a lie. Hopper murders someone. Who can say for sure whether there's someone or not? That's that's something I was going to bring up. In that last episode, Hopper murders at least 10 people. (laughs) As opposed to season one where he murdered zero people? Uh, yeah, I don't think. I mean, did he murder any of those government dudes? I don't think, right? No, he just punched him and that immediately knocked him out. Yeah, and in season yeah, two, he also didn't murder anybody. Mm-hmm. This time well, around, let's he's talk wearing... about season two. So it's just sort of like the ending to Miami Connection, where they're just suddenly cutting people down with swords. Well, no, because it's only Hopper who's murdering people, and he's in a Miami oh. vi- or a Miami. Uh, a Magnum PI shirt the entire time. So <laughs> that makes it better. Uh, Hopper remains a delight. Um, that's fun. Rest in peace. I'm sure he'll be back. I'll be surprised if he isn't. Yeah, um, season I, three. I guess my main yeah my main issue with season three, sorry, is that I keep looking back to season one and just seeing that whatever really worked for the show in season one is pretty much gone in season three the season three is just kind of like a fun entertaining show to watch season one actually had a lot of like mystery and intrigue to it season three was just like hey we're fun 80 time let's go get the russians and fight this ineffectual monster yeah i think i would agree with that point uh this is like watching die hard three so it's not it's never going to be as good as the original but it's as close as you can get to a good, as a good sequel. I don't know. I I like Die Hard three. That's what I'm saying. It's as close <laughs> as you're, it, Die Hard three is as close as you're gonna get to a good sequel to Die Hard. Oh, a, a, okay. a movie that does not need a sequel. All right. And, and that's what I, I would say about I, Stranger I, Things three. I also end up kind of frustrated with. The, these characters and how they respond to the situation they're in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, a thing that I really enjoyed about season one of Stranger Things is that a lot of it deals with people's trauma. Both Eleven and Hopper, and to a lesser extent, Winona Ryder's character. Well, not lesser. Yeah, but no, they, everyone's everyone's pretty much fine. <laughs> yeah, they're all traumatized. And then season two rolls around and everyone's cool. And in season three, they're still pretty cool, despite having numerous situations where they've been almost <laughs> murdered by hideous beasts. All right, so, uh, yeah, I think we got through the... We also get nothing about the uh, national crisis that would be unleashed. (laughs) We hear nothing about it. Like, that's they don't talk about it, they don't mention it. It's just like, oh, yeah, there was a big controversy, and... Wait, well, what's a big controversy? 30 people got killed by the Mind Flayer. Oh, that happens all the time in America. And the Russians infiltrated our country and were in a <laughs> well, base the, under the mall? The government ha- the government definitely hid that, I'm pretty sure. Oh, they yeah, the gov- the okay, s- 
the government hid that, but these characters that we're following don't seem to be concerned about it, and they're just living their everyday lives again. Oh yeah, that's not great. Uh, I would hope that if there, I would hope that a season four would try and rectify some of that or something, because Hawkins should be a ghost town. Thirty people got murdered. The mayor was in bed with the Russians. <laughs> Wait, the mayor was in on it? Yeah. Oh man. Like yeah, I, Hawkins should be like a dead, like a ghost town at that point. So I'm sort of interested in that. Uh, or but, it should be uh, a tourist I'm, hotspot. They really better get into that. If they just start season four out and it's just like, "Hey, we're fun '80s teens." I'm just gonna. No, no, Keo. What's gonna happen is it'll be the '90s. Keo, closing arguments. Uh, I think I've said all I needed to say. It was fun, but it was just kind of stupid. Okay, Swanson. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I liked it more than I think Keo Rain did. Uh, it was fun. I'll admit it is stupid, but it's stupid in the way that any blockbuster is stupid. Mm-hmm. You go into mm-hmm. it because you expect fun, and while it was darker than the previous two seasons, something I liked, uh, I would say that it's still a fun time all around. Mm-hmm. All right, gentlemen, you've raised both good points, but there can only be one winner, and that is the audience. <gasps> hey. Whoa. I just want to point out that it would be great if a CNN host ended a debate like that. (laughs) The winner was, and truly the winner of this debate was the audience. (laughs) Thank you for watching Network TV. (laughs) Everyone on the stage will now be executed. Goodbye. (laughs) Anyway, uh, yeah, what a spirited and passionate debate we had. So it's time for some news then. (laughs) Ha ha! We've proven the freedom and justice of our culture. All right. You know what we all love? Zombies. Right? Don't we all love zombies? Uh, I fear them. I I love them. I thought they were fun like 15 years ago. (laughs) Yeah, but how about now? Kiro is really hyped for that Don the Dead remake. I was like, yeah! Yeah! Get them, Fing Rames! Well, another thing that everyone really loves is The Walking Dead, or maybe Fear the Walking Dead, or maybe those spinoffs with Rick that are coming out Rick soon. The Walking uh, Dead? Rick. You know, Swanson, I'll get back to you on that. It should be called The Walking Rick. And it's just him Stop. walking around. I mean, isn't that what The Walking Dead is? Rick well, does he hum, though? Does he walk and hum, or does he just walk? Yeah, he walks and goes, mm-hmm. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, it's the walking Rick. Oh, it's like a prequel, and he's just walking around his police station at night. Yeah. got the graveyard shift. Uh, anyway, uh, the walking... yeah, that's better than what they're airing right now, I think. Mm. The Walking Dead juggernaut won't be stopped, as we mentioned a couple, uh, last week. Uh, and that means spin offs as well. That's right, it's time for another Walking Dead spinoff. This one, a little more cryptic. All they've sent out is a teaser that looks like, uh, I guess, kind of a PSA or an after-school special. Uh, that features a bunch of that features a bunch of young people saying that, uh, making, talking about, uh, what if you lived in, what if you lived in a world of safety and you decided to leave? Hmm? And I, mm. I guess that's a valuable question, but I thought we were talking about The Walking Dead, a world, where, a world that is definitely not safe. <laughs> it's not child-proofed. I can say so that. So is sure. is this like Walking Dead Middle School Edition? Uh, it's probably like the young adult ver the YA version of the Walking Dead. Yeah, <laughs> it's High School of the Dead. Oh wait, that's already a thing. <laughs> oh man, Zombie High School. Yeah, I, I was hoping that. Keo. Would, I was hoping Keo would get that reference. Oh, I got the reference. Oh, but I... he was too. He had too much dignity to acknowledge it. I don't respect that <laughs> form of media. You're right. Shameful. It's a shameful. I form. also only know what it is and know nothing about it. <laughs> you only know it from that one GIF. What's GIF. The, what the, one GIF? Uh huh. What the bullet time boobs? Yeah. Uh, Everyone knows about that, right, Swanson? Yeah, I'm so glad Sk- Stairs discussing this thing that all everybody's <laughs> totally knows and loves. Mm, maybe you should read a fucking book one time, Swanson. Well, I'm not really worried about yeah, me so much as everyone who has to listen to this. I'm sorry. Don't worry, folks. It's in the show notes. <laughs> it's in the description. <laughs> anyway, this uh, 
all that we have is this teaser to go off of of a bunch of teens asking what they would what you would you would do if you left the world of safety. So it's I guess it's going to be like a bunch of teenagers fighting zombies. Mm, what would you do if you left the world of safety? Uh, die. Probably get eaten by zombies. Yeah, yeah. I, would be dead. I would probably have sex. Since that's with, very dangerous. With what? Like the zombies? With another consenting adult. So, you're saying that you, your I'm, comfort zone is the world of safety. I'm, I'm saying that you can't have sex in the world of safety. You sure you can? What's a condom? <laughs> hey, sometimes it's a leak. They don't always prevent pregnancies. It's a 99.9% accuracy, Stairmaster. I mean, I'm sure the world of safety has the occasional zombie. Zombie what? That doesn't sound safe at all. It's mostly safe. 99.9% safe. Except Mm. for one time a zombie gets in and bites someone. (laughs) Yeah, you can't account for the 1%, for the 0.1%. No, I guess I wouldn't have sex then. I guess I wouldn't leave the world of safety. Yeah, Stairmaster was the uh, incel. I guess I would do (laughs) heroin. Oh, that is unsafe. Yeah, we never worry about the 0.1% ever, even when they have all the money. <laughs> anyway, it remains to be seen uh, when and where this Walking Dead spinoff will be appearing, but uh, who knows? Who, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> it's going to be bad, I bet. <laughs> and then mysteriously, it's... it'll be watched by too many people. Watch, it's going to be a masterpiece. It's going to go on for three seasons about it. before getting canceled. Yeah, because the actors got too old. No, it's going to have one excellently written season. <laughs> <laughs> then it's going to get canceled. Well, that'll be one more than The Walking Dead. Mm. Ayo. Anyway, uh, we've talked at length about Warner Media's streaming service, uh, weirdly called HBO Max. Um, a box. How about Max? Yes, then another in the long line of both uh, streaming services and streaming services that have HBO on them. Adding to their crown of HBO shows and friends, they've acquired yet another property. Oh no. The exclusive streaming rights to all of the modern seasons of Doctor Who. Who? Oh, so... So it's everything from like 2005 on. Doctor Who on HBO finally will get to see Christopher Eccleston's nuts. Hey, hey, Swanson, can you please go ahead and just tell me what what's HBO Max? Uh, HBO Max is that service that isn't HBO Go or HBO Now. <laughs> okay, so it's not HBO Now. So, right? What's what's what what's different? One of them has Doctor Who, one doesn't. So why would I get the other one? I assume it's going to replace those former two. Is right? it like more expensive? No, they're, they're going to exist though. Uh, I to be fair, I think HBO Go is the um, or HBO Now is the on-demand service. So I guess that's a little bit different. I don't know or care. Mm. I think on-demand is streaming. Yeah, but it's streaming usually service. streaming from a television and not just like you can watch it on the computer. So one you can't them put you it on your computer. You have an HBO subscription you use, and one of them is like. Yeah, I think that's right too. Either way, HBO Max is at least one times redundant. I don't want this. Even if it has no. Doctor Who and other BBC shows like Luther and The Honorable Woman. <laughs> Do you not respect The Honorable Woman? Yeah, it's yeah, Keo <laughs> Ray. You're gonna be quoted on someone. this, so be careful. I'm not, I'm not sexist, so I'm gonna support the honorable woman, and I'm gonna watch whatever that is. And also, All don't worry, four but, episodes of it. I'm gonna make myself my own Doctor Who show, so I don't have to pay for any HBO services. <laughs> oh, are you gonna be the Doctor? <laughs> well, of course, Swanson. Yes, yeah. Right, right, the let's, Dalek. Hear, let's, let's hear your British accent. Uh oh. Well, come on. I'll be the TARDIS. Good, good evening. I'm a British Whoa. man. It sounds like wow. he's right here in this room. Doctor Who? Oh. Yeah, Doctor uh, Doctor Whom. Okay, Copyright I can't stuff. You said we can't that. call it. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. We have to go back. 
okay, what if we had a show Diana called Doctor? All right, so what if we had a show called Doctor Mum? <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be the greatest show of all time. Well, that sounds hot. Starring uh, what was his name? Richard Madden. Yes. Yeah, as the Doctor Mum. <laughs> Wait. Uh, oh, that would be confusing. Well, yeah, anyone, exactly. You want to be saying? Well, well isn't Doctor anyone. Who confusing? You turn it on, you're like, "Wait, who's the Doctor? Where is he? What?" Okay, can you, you know, get this? I, I tried to I tried to watch Doctor Who, but I was looking for a man in a white coat and stethoscope, <laughs> and there was nothing. No, he's not actually a doctor. Yeah. See, that's just baffling. Why would they do that? He doesn't have a doctorate at all. He's a false doctor. Oh, that's stupid. He's like Kevorkian. Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to make my own Doctor Who show anymore. I'm going to make my own, my own Star Trek now. Oh. I'm just imagining the Michael Jackson episode of Doctor Who. Oh, our new our Star Trek ripoff called Spacewalk. Yeah. Space voyage. Space space travels. I'm going to be a captain. I'm captain. Captain Petard. <laughs> <laughs> and every episode he gets hoisted by it. Oh, so it's like yeah, a tragic like... character. Yes. It's like a Tony Soprano, sort of. <laughs> okay, I would totally a watch a Star Trek thing. show that had Tony Daniel Soprano Feeney. as the <laughs> captain. <laughs> what, are you trying to break my balls here? He would have been killed after the first episode after he picked a fight what? with Hugh. What, you think I'm a fucking... What, you think you can try to fuck me? What, I look like a... I look like a whore to you? You trying to... He would not mess around. You trying to fuck me like I'm one of your Romulan sluts? Huh? <laughs> Yeah, okay. I would. I would watch that. And Christopher he's a captain that doesn't play by the rules. What was that? <laughs> Christopher is in engineering. <laughs> I told you to get that hollow deck working. You're no good piece of shit. <laughs> you're always working on your stupid screenplay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I would watch that. What would it be? What would it be well, called? Sopran Soprano Check? Soprano Trek? What do you call it? It'd be called Star Trek. Waste Control Facility Nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're making it. Uh, is next week good for you guys to to film? Uh, yeah, my schedule's not busy. All right. Um, gonna need your credit card, Swanson. Oh. Captain, it is highly unlo- illogical that you would make so much money when running a waste treatment facility. Don't, act, don't ask questions you don't want the answers to. <laughs> think, think I'm laundering? All right. Well, say no laundromat. <laughs> that's it for uh, this. That's it for the news. It's time to uh, move Engine on to another segment. Christopher, I do not believe that John Favreau stole your screenplay. I think it's more likely that you had similar sources of inspiration. <laughs> and I get the shit beat out of him. I can't wait for the ending of this one where everyone dies but Tony Soprano. <laughs> oh, he's just on a dead spaceship? Yeah, he's like, just the lights go out. <laughs> the, the lights finally go out and it's a question whether or not he died oh, or not. You mean it suddenly cuts to black? No, the lights literally just go out on the ship. Yeah, yeah. Put the battery. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Critics are calling it the boldest season of Star Trek yet. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's it for that's it for the news. It's time for a segment near and dear to people's hearts. It's factor opinion. Hit the theme, Stairmaster. Baby, just shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Just be quiet and let me speak my piece. Uh, yeah, welcome to Factor Opinion. On this segment, I'm going to ask my two acquaintances here friends? a question. Say friends. Yeah, friends. Yeah, my two f- friends here a question. And they're going to... S- or I'm going to make a statement to my two friends here. And they're going to say whether or not it's a fact or an opinion. Mm-hmm. And... You know, if they say the wrong thing, something bad's going to happen to them. Oh. If they say the right thing, I'm going to smile and give them a good old thumbs up. And whoever says the most right things at the end, well, they get a prize. 
Is this why we have these nodes attached to our, you know, nether regions? Dick! Yep. Yes, we have it attached straight to our dicks. <laughs> yep. Ooh. You guys ready? All right. Uh, by certain definitions, ready. Ooh. Fact or opinion? Sand is dry. Opinion. Mm-hmm. Stare? Fact. Mm. Yeah, Swanson. Why is that an opinion? Sometimes water gets on it. Stare, explain why this is a fact. <laughs> because if you get water on it, it's mud now. That's not how sand works. It's just wet sand. No, it's mud. Sand does not become it's... mud. <laughs> you're saying when you go to the beach and you go out into the waves, you're not walking in mud, Swanson? No, you're walking you're in wet sand. When it gets dry again, it is sand. But when it's wet, aren't you going to say your feet are muddy? No, I'm going to say my feet are sandy. Even All right, then what's, then what's mud then, Swanson? Go ahead, explain. Uh, wet dirt. But isn't dirt just brown sand? No. No? Yeah. Dirt is soil dirt. that plants use for nutrients. And cactuses yeah, use sand for nutrients as well. Yeah, dirt is sand. It's not... Yeah, there gets the point. Yeah! Fact or opinion? Anime is real. Fact. Mm. Opinion. Stare? Yeah, once again, Stairmaster, please explain <laughs> this once in our plight. Okay, as you all remember, Ron Paul ran in 2008 on a platform of making anime real. How and he, he wouldn't do, do that. that if any, yeah, he wouldn't do that if anime was already real, Swanson. Okay, but if anime isn't already real, explain to me, Hatsune Miku. Mm. <gasps> Wait, she does walk around in the flesh in our world, doesn't she? I and saw her perform President live. On, Domino's. I saw her perform live on the Stephen Colbert show. Oh God! <laughs> Damn, Stairmaster. I can't believe that happened without my mom telling me about it. I guess I guess your your news from eleven years ago with Ron Paul is a little outdated. Fuck! Swanson, you get the point. Huh. Oh, huh. nice. Oh, that's heated. All right, next question. All right. Light bulbs are a scam. Fact. Hmm. There. Oh, well, Swanson said what I wanted to say. Well, I mean, you, can say you, you don't need to change the truth. Opinion. Oh. Stare, why, why is that an opinion? Okay, so get this. They're marketed as light bulbs. Uh-huh. They're shaped like bulbs, and they yeah. produce light. Yeah. What's a scam? Too expensive. Yeah. Who needs light bulbs when you got light? <laughs> Where are you going to get light from without your light bulbs? The buddy? sun, dummy. The s- what are you, are do you with- stupid? It's right there. Are- okay, but do you see that it's closer to the ground than it was when we started recording this podcast? Yeah, so? Eventually, it's going to go beneath the ground. And we won't be yeah, able that's- to see it. Yeah, that's sleep time. You yeah. go to bed. And you go to bed and you wake up when sun back. When light back. Okay, but what if you have to do some work? Well, you do it when light, when light happening. Okay, but what if you have to release this podcast when the sun comes up tomorrow, but you also need to edit it? And the sun's down. Oh. Well, you don't need light to record. I mean, to edit a podcast, you have a computer screen that's full of light. Yeah. Okay, but get this. The computer screen is just a bunch of tiny light bulbs. That's not true. No, it's full of sun. Okay, what if computer... I told you light bulbs are just... Electrical suns. Computer full of sun, that's what I always say. <laughs> no, Stairmaster, that's completely false. The The sun is a big ball of constant nuclear reactions happening. <laughs> it's pretty much like a giant Chernobyl in there. Mm. You know, you're not wrong. And light bulbs don't have that. They're just like, I don't know, Except for gas that. or diodes or stupid. It's garbage. Light bulbs are a scam. Swanson gets the point. Yeah. Wait, hold 
What were they? Oh, wait, we never actually got to the part where you're being lied to. <laughs> okay. Look, the points already been been distributed. We're not going to talk about this anymore. It's true. The points right. have never Ta been revoked before. Okay, let's go to town on my balls or whatever. I'm ready. Okay, I'm hitting the switch right now. Ah! Wow. All right, next sure statement. Sure, Stairmaster stepped away from the mic to do that. <laughs> oh. Next statement. Soap is good for you. Oh, we're still going? Oh, what? Oh, he electrocuted his balls because he lost. <laughs> I didn't say he lost, he just told me to do it. <laughs> oh, Stair no. loves punishment, it's true. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. Well, are you going to tell him you're welcome, KRA? You're welcome. Now answer <laughs> the question. <laughs> we, say it again. Thank you, Soap Daddy. Soap is good for you. Oh, I thought you meant me. <laughs> you're welcome. What qu What question is located in thank you, Daddy? <laughs> you didn't say. You just said say it again. I figured it pleased you to hear it. <laughs> All right, say the question again. Soap is good for you. False. Opinion. <laughs> Fact. Stare? Why is soap good for you? It can, it's very helpful. It can make you smell good, and it can make things slippery. Yeah, but smelling good isn't really good for you. It doesn't help your body at all, really. It just helps other people. Well, it helps people be near you, and that produces joy. Eh. That's... No... Look, if you eat if you eat soap, it just makes you get sick. Yeah, no good. One time I saw I, one time I smelled soap and I was like, "Oh, that's that's a good smell. Always... I want that smell in my mouth." And it turned out no. I didn't want that smell in my mouth. It tastes bad. You're only supposed to eat soap if you say cuss words in order to purge it from your system. Oh, like if you say like but yeah, that's yeah, bad soap for you is, because soap is medicine, not food. Well, you no, it, you don't eat it though. You just put it in your mouth for a little while. You don't swallow it. I don't think. But yeah, it's it's really upsetting. Like they they put like the tastiest packaging on the soap. <laughs> What's the tasty packaging look like, Keo? It's it's got like this fruit medley on the front of it. It's like this is like, a tasty... bunch of fruits. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, just got a bunch of on the fruit soap on it. bottle. It's it's like here's here's your fruit salad in a bottle, and you think you're gonna drink it down. It's gonna be tasty, oh. but you just get really sick. I thought you were talking about soap bars. No, no, no. Too. Opinion, opinion. Liquid soap is bad for you. Wow, he's changing it. Can't put them hmm. unprecedented. Boy, right, I thought well, you guys were stupid eating bars of soap. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I mean, so, I eat uh, soap. I don't know. So it looks like. You both get the point, but you still lose there. No, 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 Ah! Wow. You hate to see it, and yet Stairmaster's weirdly aroused. <laughs> yeah. So, All right, so you ready really... for your prize, Swanson? Yes, please. Flip. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Swanson just creamed... He's creaming himself. That's not cream. What an I well, how ironic. I hope we all had fun this week. Why haven't you turned it off yet? Oh, okay, here you go. Well, uh, that wasn't enjoyable. Are turns you going to change your pants before we continue? Turns out I'm not into ball torture. <laughs> It's an acquired taste. You told me you were, Swanson. No, I told you he was. Oh. Oh, right. Swanson just likes football. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a sports boy. But he doesn't like football torture. Well, who does? <laughs> anyway, that's it for Fact or Opinion. And now it's time to move on to another segment. It's Trailer Blazers. Hit the theme, Keo. Keo. Dun 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 dun. Wow. 
Welcome to Trailer Blazers, where we talk about the latest and greatest in trailers. <gasps> this week we're talking about the, uh, frankly, ridiculous trailer for <laughs> the third season of 13 Reasons Why. Oh yeah, just an entire one single take until the very end. And then it becomes a double take. <laughs> yeah, uh, so we've talked about 13 Reasons Why before on the podcast. Uh, it's first season dealt with the suicide of a... Uh, teenaged girl and if you uh didn't know it was handled poorly <laughs> but this season it's a homicide yeah apparently so some else. shit went down between seasons one and three <laughs> aka season two uh and now they have to deal with a murder mystery i guess <laughs> you guys were really confused by this but i i'm not surprised at all there's a murder or oh, i also got it I'm just making Swanson feel better. It kind of reminded me of True Detective, how the first shot was those teens in the car. Yeah, but I mean, like, this was just a show that was, like, exploring how suicide devastates people, and now it's somehow become a murder mystery? It seems a bit well, weird. No. I think the I guy think... killed himself, but was driven to suicide, and that's what the mystery is, buddy. But it flashes on the screen asking you who killed him. Yeah, who drove him to suicide. Okay, but that's not suicide. <laughs> what is it, then? I mean, if someone drove him to suicide, you don't call it a murder. You call it a suicide. <laughs> right, you, unless it was like they specifically forced him to kill himself at gunpoint or something, which doesn't really make much sense. Although, Stairmaster... St- st- <laughs> I want to get to both these points, but I want to talk about Stairmasters first. Okay. Which is, um, I think Stairmaster might actually somehow have cracked the code. Maybe it is actually (laughs) what it is. I want to keep track of what happens on this season of the show, just so we can come back to it later and say Stairmaster might have been right. (laughs) Oh, no. As for Keorain's idea, I think it's less plausible, but it is fun to think about for just a second. (laughs) Which is that these teens bullied this person... (laughs) And then captured him and held him at gunpoint and said, kill yourself. (laughs) And he did it. For what reason, I guess we have to find out by watching the show? I guess guess to die faster. But getting shot... (laughs) Uh, Depends on where. Uh, I guess so. It could have been like that scene in Narcos, where they shoot him in the belly and then bury him alive. Oh, that's nasty. Yeah. Yeah, these teens don't look that nasty. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, this is a shot where it keeps, like, cutting to different scenes of, like, teenagers being, uh, like, all secretive and weird. It's like, yeah, there's, like, the camera's just panning and each scene is, like, inside an element of the previous scene. I mean, to be co- honest, compared to most of the trailers we watch, it's actually kind of, like, visually interesting. <laughs> But why for this te- stupid teen drama? I'm not sure. Yeah, like Netflix, why are you wasting your inventive trailer money on this? <laughs> You've it's only not got teen so drama. much. It's not teen drama anymore. It's teen murder. Oh, you're right. Which is a legitimate form of murder, guys. Don't don't be ageist. I mean, yes, teenage murder is a thing that exists. It just mm-hmm. seems weird. It's to very, it's very serious, especially in a high school setting. Also, uh, reading up on it just now, I have learned that the teenager who died was apparently the quote-unquote antagonist of the series. What? I guess he's the guy who drove her to suicide? Question mark, question oh. mark. Oh. So shouldn't everyone be dancing? Well, the mom doesn't seem happy. After, after all of the visual Fucker. inventiveness is over, we get a scene where she's like, I need you to figure out who killed my son. So is she hiring these teens as detectives? <laughs> yes. Teen P.I. Now yeah, that's this a series. Like, this looks like a ridiculous season of television, and maybe we'll watch it despite having never watched the other two seasons. <laughs> mm. Only... Or maybe we'll kill ourselves. Yeah, maybe. We'll be another yet another statistic on this show's resume. <laughs> You did this, Mr. Netflix. Look at it. No, his name is Mr. Netflix. Oh. Hello, Jeff I'm Mr. Flick. Flick. Netflix. And, and the product is called Netflix because it belongs to him. 
Yeah, they just didn't want to put an apostrophe in there because uh, market research had shown that apostrophes uh, do not attract viewers. They prefer the letter X. Yeah. All right, well, that's it for Trailer Blazers, and it's time for our main event. We <gasps> watched a TV show, and we're going to talk about it. This week, it was Amazon Prime's The Boys! The Boys! They massacred my boy! I've abandoned my boy! Anyway, The Boys. Uh, another production from uh, Seth Rogen, who did, who did the... <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, he's the producer on this. Oh... He that also sort of did. Makes the, sense. He also uh, produced the, another uh, adaptation of the works of comic book writer Garth Ennis, uh, Preacher. Mm. Uh, okay. Interesting note on this show. Um, since wait, wait, before you continue, yeah. sorry, I have to get this out here. I thought when you said Seth Rogen, Joe Rogan came to my mind. And I was really confused. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, there would oh, yeah, be a lot more Elon Jiu-Jitsu Musk. in this. Yeah. Yeah, there's, and also yeah, there's... the protagonist would be taking brain pills to defeat the superheroes. <laughs> yeah, also probably smoking a lot of weed on air. The Carl Urban would be like, Jamie, give me that footage. Pull, pull, pull up that footage, Jamie. So yeah, um, that... The Boys has been in production in some way, shape, or form since 2008. Wow! Originally, uh, from 2008 until 2015. Originally, originally titled The Men. <laughs> no, it's always been titled The Boys <laughs> after the comic book. Um, Briefly retitled The Lads <laughs> as a BBC production. Oh, I would have watched. I would have watched <laughs> The Lads for sure. These mad lads. Anyway, from uh, until 2015, it was going to be a film adaptation. Uh, mm. Much like Preacher, the, but the eventually boy starring Denzel Washington. <laughs> uh, eventually, it was uh, moved to Cinemax, where they were going to develop a. Because of course, Cinemax would want the sec this the sexy, dirty superhero show. Oh uh, God! And then eventually, production moved to Amazon in 2017, yeah. and here we are. On this cursed earth. Yeah. And finally, a show not afraid to show us that dick dong. Finally, finally, a show for the boys. Yeah, a certain kind of boys. The kinds that want to see the Good dick boys. dong. Like me. <laughs> no. <laughs> and yeah. we get, like, full heart on. Yeah, it's uh, something. Anyway, yeah, so... This is a good show right off the bat because uh, we get a warning for rape. So you know there's going to be nothing <laughs> problematic in this one. Oh, yeah. This disclaimer's got everything. Nudity and sexual content. I've never seen yeah, a show yeah, have that many disclaimers at once. <laughs> I've also never seen one that's just said rape on it either. <sighs> yeah, that might be a that might I be mean, a thanks one. for the heads up. Yeah, I don't know. It was baffle. It, it was a little weird to see that on there. <laughs> we got anyway, spooked. Yes. Uh, we get an introduction to the world of superheroes via this Which, lady destroying this armored car. Oh, yeah, saving these two shit kids. Yeah. I mean, they're just normal kids. Mm. What, do you think they're shit kids because they said motherfucker? Because they're in a TV show I want to watch. Oh. I'm taking up screen time. Mm. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, and we get introduced to the world of superheroes. Apparently there's like... Uh, like super powered is just like a thing. It's kind of like mutants. You just get born mm. with it, apparently. Uh, yeah. And there's a huge group of people similar to the Justice it's League. Very, it's very monetized, though. Yeah. They oh, got movie naturally. deals, merchandise tie-ins. And you get introduced to uh, Huey, our main character of sorts. Mm. And uh, yeah, he just seems like a normal dude. Living He's his working life. at Radio Shack. He's afraid to ask his boss for a raise. Mm-hmm. And he has an intense uh, discourse with his girlfriend about laying cable versus laying pipe. And then she calls him a cuck for not asking for the raise. Yeah, sure. Uh, and then we get an epic fatality. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw, I saw this page in the comic. So I was just dreading it the whole time, the minute she showed up. Kia, what are yeah. your thoughts on the scene? Not fun. <laughs> yeah, not a good time? They... Ch- Big change from the comic, though. In that page I saw, the guy was like, get out of the way! 
Well, on this one, the guy actually seemed remorseful, but also very preoccupied. Yeah, the guy did not get out of the guy did not ask to get out of the way. Instead, he just ran <laughs> over her and was just like, "Oh, mm-hmm. oh my bad," and kept going. Literally, just turned turned her into just bloody mist. Yeah. Uh, and he kept he he was just holding her hands. And that's all that's left. Do you think he kept those? No. Yeah, see, it's like the guy from My Hero Academy now. Mm. <laughs> so, like, he makes the hands, like, grab <laughs> onto Yeah, him. yeah he wears the hands. <laughs> well, the main villain in My Hero Academy is a guy who has a bunch of hands. And apparently they're from his family who he murdered. So, the, so this guy <laughs> just has a fun... So now he's going to start collecting hands? Yes, and he's going to try to kill the Superman of this universe. He's going to... Yeah, gonna he's... Get, like, a, he's He's gonna get disintegrating hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he gonna ki- kill. He's gonna keep killing the superheroes and taking their hands. Oh no, that's a different anime character entirely at that point. <laughs> well, why would he only want one of the superheroes' hands? No, he only has no he, hands of his loved ones. Yes, and in this case, it's just his girlfriend. In the case of the boys. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So <laughs> we, that's our introduction to the boys. Is uh, Gross out murder. <laughs> uh, and then we he get gets her... away with it. Yeah. Easily. I do want to say this episode did not make it clear who the boys are yet. It's true. All we meet and we meet only one of the titular boys in this episode. We meet multiple boys in this episode, but we're not sure which one the show refers to. As... The show's all about discovering who the boys are, as we all need to in our personal lives. It's true. We all need to find out who the boys are. Do you think this uh, show is sort of... Do you think anybody watched this show expecting like an entourage type of deal where it's just like a group of guys hanging out being dudes? <laughs> well, I mean, yes. I think the entourage dudes would act like these superheroes and probably do. The superheroes? Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm. Highlander isn't going to do the movie! Sorry, his <laughs> name is Homelander. <laughs> anyway, we get introduced to uh, another of our... I guess she, what we get throughout this first episode is sort of a dual get, narrative going on. Yeah, sort two dual point characters. Yeah, which they provide like a juxtaposition between the two of them because one of their lives is shit and the other one's life is <laughs> on the uptick. Also, sh- but it becomes shit sh- real quick. <laughs> yeah, we have this lady, this uh, amateur Annie. hobbyist superhero. Anna. Yeah, Annie is her name, but she goes by the superhero name Starlight because she has the power to affect light. Mm. Um, so eventually she, we see her like trying out, uh, for being a member of the seven, this highly, com- uh, com- what, what's the word I'm looking for here? Commodified, uh, superheroes. Yes. Uh, group. A capitalist dream. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, she doesn't expect herself to win, but then she gets the, uh, the go ahead from ever, from the, the seven as they're called. And uh, it's like a dream come true for her until the one dude uh, asked her to suck his dick. <laughs> yeah. We're skipping ahead, but that dude took his pants off real fast. Well, he's a superhero. <laughs> yeah, well, we're skipping ahead because we do miss Simon Pegg. He shows oh, yeah, up. He... That's the disrespectful um, dad, or was he the lawyer? He's the disrespectful dad, yes. He's, uh... Mm, this Huey's dad's dad. a cuck. Yeah, True. Uh, he's Huey's dad, which is a fun play because in the comics, uh, Huey himself is based off of Simon Pegg in terms of appearance, but now he's too old to play the role, so. Uh, so in a way things have come full circle. Yes. Yeah. He, he is too old to be one of the boys, so he must Mm -hmm. pass off his mantle of boyhood to someone else. Oh, that's... What if he... What if he actually just does join the boys later on? Okay, that's weird that Simon Pegg is playing an American character with an American accent, but Carl Urban is playing a British character with a British accent. Yeah. Why didn't th- yeah, it would have made more sense to switch him. I don't think. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think. Uh, Carl Urban and Simon Pegg sort of have different body types. <laughs> Maybe. If I saw Simon Pegg and he said, my name's the Butcher, I'd be like, no, it's not, buddy. <laughs> and then he would kill you with his butcher <laughs> knife. 
Uh, oh, it would be like the end of that, uh, what's that British horror movie where the people, where the person gets axe murdered at the end, surprisingly? The axe murderer? No, what? You're just making stuff up. <laughs> yes. It's that psychological trauma movie where, uh, We the need to talk gets... about Jimmy, or whatever his name was. Maybe? I don't know. Anyway. We need to talk about Kevin. It's an obscure, uh, not obscure, but it's a weird movie. Anyway. Yeah, so uh, we we get, of course, superheroes have become a corporation because why wouldn't they in a capitalist hellscape? Well, they're basically like cops with... They're basically co- like cops meet Hollywood. Yeah, co- yeah, pretty much. But like, this mm-hmm. is definitely a corporation that's running everything and telling mm-hmm. them like, oh yeah, yes. you, you need to keep up with this appearance. And oh to... yeah, but it's basically Disney. Yeah. Um... And then, yeah, Starlight gets to have the full superhero experience, apparently including uh, being coerced into oral sex. Yeah, she gets uh, she gets uh, Weinsteined. I almost said Epstein. Yeah, that dude's pants come hey, off. Hey, that, that still Different. fits fine. Yeah, it's not even like he has super speed. He's supposed to be like a Aquaman type by his name. Yeah, we don't see what his superpowers yeah. actually are, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. The kids the kids at the beginning say uh, he can command fish like Aquaman. Uh, oh, that's true, yeah, because they're talking about him and the uh, invisible guy. All right, so, um, so yeah, this is the type of thing that I'm not sure if this show is going to be able to, like, handle <laughs> in a way that is, like, good or interesting. I just don't think it's going to be, like... I don't know. It kind of just happens in this, and then they they don't really examine the ramifications of it too much. She has like a speech later with Huey, where uh, where they sort of intersect and they tackle their respective problems, and he's just like, oh, "You just gotta persevere, and you can do it." And that's kind of a bad message already. <laughs> um. I actually ended up watching part of the next couple episodes with my dad, not knowing what the show was. And I said, hey, what's this? He said, it's the boys. (laughs) Already (laughs) patted on the couch invitingly. Yeah. So I can actually say a little bit of what happens. All right. Uh, Like later on, I I don't know which episode it was because I saw some random ones. I didn't know what what was going on. But she's like a lot more disgruntled with the thing and she basically <laughs> says if you touch me if you touch me again i'll kill you basically hmm all right that's well. how <laughs> they tried yeah I... okay sure <laughs> uh all right um of course they're they were sort of left in a well i'm not even gonna try and defend it there's uh it's a thing that happens in the comic as well from what i understand uh mm. So I guess that's why they included it in this to try and appease like fans of the comic book. I get. Here's a question: Why are they doing all this girl stuff in a show called The Boys? <laughs> are you saying you just wanted all guys? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, here's a here's a part that I don't want to spoil. I don't know if I should spoil for you, uh, Stairmaster. But there's a member of the boys who's a girl. Whoa! <laughs> So, it should be called The Individuals. No, they're the boys. Also, her name on the in the group is The Female, so maybe that's part of it. <laughs> oh, that's a problem. And also, she's a mute. <laughs> oh, no. So, it's like so a she, Joss so, Whedon character. <laughs> so, she keeps her mouth shut while the boys do the talking? I guess so. I mean, look, it sounds bad. Uh, maybe in the show it's better, but who knows. Anyway, um, so yeah, Huey is uh, offered a lot of money to sign a non-disclosure, uh, pretty much to make the whole 40, issue go thousand. away. Yeah, and uh, he decides uh, he can't decide whether or not he's going to take it. Uh, he sees. I mean, you say you say a lot of money, but they basically gave him a, a pittance. It's true. It's forty-five thousand isn't like a shit ton of money for someone literally dying in front of you. Yeah, I mean, considering that later on we hear that they're get, literally getting billions in revenue. <laughs> um, so then we see A Train, the car- the guy who killed his uh, girlfriend on Jimmy Fallon. No, no, no. K- 
because yes. uh, nothing explains the sort of capitalist uh, era we live in quite like Jimmy Fallon hanging out with superheroes. Is this a different scene, or are you thinking of the invisible guy? Oh, no, sorry. He sees the invisible guy on Jimmy Fallon. Translucent. Yes, yes. and he's hanging out, and he's, he explains his powers to Jimmy Fallon, which become important later on. Its skin turns into a carbon-based metamaterial, which bends light. But... Um, so yeah, he, uh, Huey starts getting disgruntled about, uh, his place and, uh, and all of this. Keeps seeing A-Train everywhere he goes. Oh yeah, he has a nervous breakdown in a convenience store because everything has A-Train on it. Uh, so then we're about 30 minutes in, and finally Carl Urban shows up. This is the moment we've but, all been waiting for. Uh, he's he's he plays Billy the Butcher, and he's got a kind of problematic accent. Yeah, Pro- problematic in that it doesn't work that well. Unlike your accent, of course, which is flawless. Yes, they should right. have had me playing Billy the Butcher. Let's hear some Billy the Butcher from you real quick, because I just I, I know it's good, and I I just want the people to know. Oi, laddie, <laughs> let's go fuck up those supers, and how about half the pint? Oi, tell him to bugger off. It's just like it's just like he came through the comic book page and talked to me. Uh, problematic accent notwithstanding, uh, Carl Urban's ax, uh, Carl Urban's just sort of dynamic throughout all of this. He's got a he's got a good charisma to him that makes you uh, understand why Huey might be taken to Butcher's uh, whole deal. <laughs> I do whatever he says, basically. I mean, yeah, this dude gives a whole I mean, speech should... about how all of these I mean, superheroes are become have become part of like a capitalist system. It's pretty great. I mean, he's Judge Dredd. Why wouldn't you listen to him about? Yeah. Also, in this show, he's justice. also in this show, he's just a charismatic, you know, British guy. Mm-hmm. So that slaps. Oh man, imagine if Dredd was in the boys. Well, then they would just win automatically. <laughs> I know, but that'd be cool for like the ten minutes. Like the 40 minutes it would take him to deal with all the superheroes. Uh, so they go to this superhero club uh, where all of the superheroes get to engage in their wildest fantasies. So we get a lot of a, a lot of inventive superhero sex going on in this one. <laughs> yeah, we see Stretcho, but, man. Stretch over to two handsome boys. To and kiss then stretch and them off. <laughs> Oh, and we see a we tiny see... man jump into a lady's coochie, and she immediately What's comes. He... Yeah, he you know Very he's done practicing sound that. effects there too. Yeah, it's a wholesome time for the whole family. Uh, he's like an Olympic diver. I mean, yeah, he's definitely been practicing diving straight into that puss. <laughs> and at this point, Carl Urban has an, a line as a little bit of a side that Homelander is the only guy who doesn't do the debauchery. Doesn't seem to have any vices. Yeah, it's, it seems like some sort of setup for something. Anyway, um... No, I I, I, I believe Homelander is a pure, nice guy with no problems. <laughs> well, with Come a on. name like Homelander, how could he be shitty? <laughs> yeah. He's just he's a patriot. Just a, yeah, he's a patriotic... He just wants a secure future for our children. white-blooded hero... <laughs> Yep, he's blonde, blue eyes. What's the problem? <laughs> Did I say white blooded? I meant red blooded. Well, white blooded sounded better. <laughs> it sounded more accurate. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, these two story threads that we've been getting with Annie, uh, aka Starlight, and Huey uh, intersect in the park, and they sort of spur each other on to their own uh, storylines, which. I'm sure we're going to meet up again because, uh, you know, Butcher's whole thing is he wants to kill the Seven. What a serendipitous encounter. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's one of those things that only happens in a TV show. But uh, it's a good way to get get everybody from point A to point B. Uh, there's a weird subplot that goes on in this episode where, like, the mayor of, I think it's Baltimore? Noted, yeah, it's Baltimore. Noted shithole. <laughs> Uh, it's trying to it's trying to hire a superhero or get him to sign on recruit. Yeah. Like sports terms when you get an athlete. 
Yeah, and they charge, of course, an exorbitant amount of money, so the uh, mayor decides to try and blackmail them with uh, something called Compound V, which does something to superheroes that I'm sure is bad. And the lady's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And at that moment, you immediately know what's going to happen to that mayor. Yeah, at that moment, right. you're like, oh, that dude's dead. Yeah. Um, Rest in peace, mayor. Yeah. <laughs> so we uh, we get a couple scenes throughout the uh, mm-hmm. first 30 minutes or so that the translucent is kind of an invisible perv. And by kind of, we mean we literally see him. Just see fully him nude. In the unisex bathroom. Yeah. Just hanging out. So with a uh, hard on. Huey does eventually agree to the butcher's plan, which is to get him to go into the Seven's headquarters and plant a bug. Mm-hmm. Um so he gets that hap- to happen by demanding that a train apologize to him in person. So mm-hmm. he gets the meeting and then he goes to the bathroom to uh get ready to plant his bug or whatever, but he drops it. And <laughs> who would notice it being dropped but the guy the invisible guy who stands around naked in the bathroom the entire time (laughs) also two things there's a mural up up on the table of like previous heroes who were in seven and one of them looks like blade oh yeah did you see the the picture yeah and the next one when a train shows up uh huey has this brief scene where he's about to have a panic attack but he kind of just represses it and that's always a good, healthy thing to do. Yeah, repressing things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So he uh, he goes uh, he goes and plants this bug, and he uh, makes his way back home. Uh, he seems kind of bummed out We're though. Talk- he gets like so excited about uh, yeah. seeing A Train face to face, and like act- it makes it seem like it's like an act of defiance when all he really did was just have a panic attack. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then Carl Urban dumps him. Yeah, he's like, look, kid, it's not me, it's you. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not working out between us, okay? I'll call you when I call you. But really, he does seem, uh, like, he, he does seem like he's gonna, like, not pay it, like, not... Uh, come back. Uh, yeah, not come back until he rips up that check in front of him, and he's like, this is a good, you're a good lad. <laughs> and anyways, he drives off, and immediately naked man attacks him. Yeah, the naked man comes in and uh, beats the shit out of Huey until uh, the butcher comes in. And uh, this is really the scene that pays off the invisible guy's powers right here. Yeah. Because we get to see Huey get thrown around by uh, nothing. And then uh, my favorite effect in the episode, until his death anyway, is um, when the car hits the invisible man and you see him fly into everything. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, So then Butcher gets out of the car and we get a fun fight scene set to, uh, what's it set to? Music. All right. So, uh, yeah, we get this cool fight scene between the Butcher and the invisible guy. Uh, (laughs) Eventually the Butcher figures out where he is by spitting blood on him. A fun little thing there. And still gets his ass kicked anyways. Yeah. And has to rely on Huey to literally fry his ass, his literal ass. (laughs) Mm-hmm. And he does. All right. Got him. And that's oh, and it. The mayor gets mur- and also, there's a scene cut in inner space in this of the mayor getting murdered when he's flying home. No, Baltimore. that just happens at the end. Ah. Anyway, so yeah, he literally fries the guy, and he's dead. And uh, Homelander kicks him just to make sure. Or not Homelander. But Butcher kicks him just to make sure. <laughs> Homelander oh, no. shows up. <laughs> He's like, oh, I always hated that guy. You've done well to defeat the weakest of the seventh. Um, but can you handle? Spoiler the alert: He's not dead. You don't think he's dead? Oh, you've watched it, so oh, you I know, know he's, he's not, not dead. dead. Yeah. <laughs> wow! Yeah. Thanks, Kiel. No, I don't have to Turns watch out it's it. It's a little anymore. hard to kill than that. Anyway, yeah, Homelander uh, shoots down the mayor of Baltimore's plane uh, on order, presumably on orders from uh, his. Uh, Mm-hmm. Boss, and that's it. Good show. Yeah, I'm sure there's a good explanation for this. Homelander's a good guy. Yeah, you don't think he's just sort of like doing shady government things? No, they're tricking him. He's a nice guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. I, I, I bet you he's just he's, one of the boys. He's my friend. 
anyway, that's it for this uh, episode. What'd you guys think? Ah. Uh, Please feel free. To I, uh, I enjoyed it. Would you say it's a tune in? I would say it's a tune in. I was thinking about the rape stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, it was okay, I guess. Um, yeah, I had fun. It was mostly fine. I just don't know if I actually would want to watch any more of it. Wow. Well. Uh, I guess it's a light tune in. Yeah, I'll I'll give it a tune in. Why not? Yeah, that's a tune in for the boys. <laughs> Uh, and that's it for this week's episode of the show. If you have any quips, comments, questions, foresights, or otherwise, send them to us at tvtunerspodcast at gmail.com. What's that email key, Orain? Uh, hashtag blue pill? No. Dot com? Hit us up at uh, joe30330. That's right. And you can find me on Twitter. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Jesse Swanson. I'm on Twitter at Stormancer. You can also find me on Letterboxd as Stairmaster. I'm on Twitter. Congratulations. You can also find Thank the you. show on Twitter at TV Tuners. And use the hashtag TV Tuners and we'll give a glance at what you're saying. I'll reply to it. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, we're on all of the podcatchers of your choice. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, all the podcatchers of, that you could possibly want. Send us a five-star review and uh, some comments, and it would be greatly appreciated. And, uh, For now. As always, we're part of the Big Heads Media Network, a bunch of great podcasts that are included on that network, uh, and you might just hear one after we're done here. Anyway, that's it for this week's episode of the show. See you guys next week for more TV goodness. Until then, keep watching. Bye. It's over. My name is Michael Pals, and I am the host of the Jet Up Bleeding Green podcast here on the Big Heads Media Network. You can also find me anywhere. You can download iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, anywhere you can find me. I am there. I will bring you my opinions on the latest Jets news and information every week here on the Jet Up Bleeding Green podcast.